It's day two of the protests on the war in Gaza on the UW-Madison campus. Students have set up an encampment near the library at on Library Mall. They're demanding UW divest from companies listed on the American Friends Service Committee. That list includes American companies like Boeing, Caterpillar, and Northrop Grumman. So far, the scene has been peaceful today. A small number of police officers are present, but they haven't arrested anyone. UW-Madison officials, including Chancellor Jennifer Mnuchin and Provost Charles Isbell, say campus leaders are willing to meet with the organizers of the protest, but only once the tents have been removed from campus. Arman Rahman is there now and has an update on those talks between student activists and the university. Arman? Yeah, Brady, before we get to that, a bit of a lay of the land here. Things, like you said, a lot calmer tonight than they were this time. Last night, there have been less chants and less human barriers formed around the encampment. I did hear some musical performances happening a few minutes ago behind me. However, there have been more tents popping up in the encampment today. I'd say about a dozen maybe or so more and bigger ones as well. And that, the protesters say, has been a sticking point in their talks yesterday with UW administration. Now, the group says the talks included Dean of Students Christina Allstad, among other administrators. The protesters say for the first negotiations, the administrators said they didn't read the protesters' demands and said that the tents were put up, quote, just to spite them. Then students claimed the administration gave them a time frame for removing the tents yesterday, but they did not enforce that. They say there was a second time frame given today, but the protesters would not share those with me. Admin then said they want to repair the harm and distrust between them and marginalized communities on campus. But the fact that they see these tents and only think about themselves, their image and their hurt shows that they don't care about repairing distrust and they only care about feeling powerful again. They only want to appeal to their Zionist donors. I am reaching out to UW administration office for comment on those negotiations. And while the large number of students here today remain pro-Palestine and pro-divestment, there have been more pro-Israel and Jewish students here today in sparse numbers, occasionally engaging with some of the encampment protesters. We'll hear more from them later on tonight in the hour. For now, live on Library Mall, Armand Rahman, FOS 47 News at 9. Thank you, Armand. Well, some Jewish groups on campus have shared statements about the protests, where a majority of the students call on Israel to make changes. In part, Hillel at the university said no student's right to be proud of their Jewish and Israeli identity should be compromised, adding, when a cause aligns with terrorist organizations taking pride in the protests and actions, and when language calls for violence against an entire identity, religion, and people, it becomes hate and discrimination. Madison wasn't alone in seeing these protests, as UW-Milwaukee students have set up similar encampments and are demanding the same things. Today, Governor Evers spoke for the first time in Milwaukee on campus on the protests. He says his administration is in contact with leadership on both sides. When asked if he would send in the National Guard if the protests escalate, he said this. No, nothing about National Guard. Uh, we, we, the, that is not on the table. But we've had, we've had conversations all, uh, all during this uh, several days that this has been happening. And we'll continue to do that. And hopefully we'll have peaceful resolution. But he says the encampments at some point will have to end, saying that if it's not done voluntarily, some kind of action will need to be taken.